Those studies cannot stand if, if they were truly opened up for open peer review by, by other scientists. What do, what do you make of his assertion? Because I said, where's the animal? Or where, where's even one? You know, they tested 80,000 and they're not there. And he said the Chinese got rid of them, you know, in an effort to cover it up, that they didn't want the news narrative to be they came from a lab, which, you know, the, or sorry, from, uh, from the Wuhan market. So I agree that China now has a stance that we, th that they don't want any any evidence at all that this virus originated in China. It's an anywhere but cure stance. So they're, they're trying to blame it on lobsters from Maine. They're trying to blame it on cold chain from <laughs> Southeast Asia. Uh, they're trying to blame it on salmon from Faro Islands, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, everyone who sees that knows it's a, it's a farce, right? So I looked at her Wikipedia entries. So Alina Chan became known during COVID for co-authoring a preprint according to which the virus was pre-adapted to humans and she suggested that COVID-19 could have escaped from a laboratory. The preprint had not been accepted for publication by a scientific journal but it received a significant reception in the popular press. So there's a huge popular versus expert discrepancy with regard to the lab leak hypothesis. It's incredibly exciting theme in the popular press but the scientific establishment, particularly with regard to virologists, uh, tend not to buy it. So the reaction of virologists and other specialists to chance hypothesis has been overwhelmingly negative. New York Times noted in October 2021 that Elena Chan's view has been widely disputed by other scientists. Then she detailed her views in long Twitter postings. All right, that's not the normal way that scientists try to make a case. She wrote opinion pieces on the subject with science journalist Matt Ridley. Uh, Matt Ridley is a global warming skeptic. And so global warming is similar. There's an overwhelming consensus among the experts that there's man-made global warming that is leading us to catastrophe. On the other hand, right, their funding, their status, their prestige, their access to pretty young women, their invites to give speeches and to appear in the media depends upon them being right that we're headed for a global catastrophe and they have the cure they can show us how not to go there and so if you're a scientist with a contrary perspective on this global warming hypothesis you're gonna have an impossible time of getting funding because scientific funding is overwhelmingly done by groups by bureaucracies and how do you become an expert in global warming other global warming experts anoint you as an expert in global warming. How, how do you become an expert in anything? Other experts note you as an expert, but an expert is, is someone who knows things that regular people don't know, can't know, unless they put in an equivalent amount of, uh, of study as the expert. So expertise poses a significant challenge to democracy and virologists want you know maximum freedom for themselves and status and prestige and funding and they, they don't like what uh, Alina Chan is talking about. She and Matt Ridley authored a book called Viral, The Search for the Origin of, of COVID-19. Now, global warming is something so complicated that no one person can be an expert in global warming. You can only know a tiny little bit of the overall global warming hypothesis, right? You can only develop, you know, a limited amount of expertise. And so it, it's based on all sorts of models that uh, from, from an outside perspective seem fairly questionable. But you can't get funding if you don't buy into the global warming hypothesis because funding primarily comes from governments and private business. And any private business that funded you know, anti-global warming research would be castigated and you know, just dragged through the mud as people you know, intent on destroying our planet. So she published an op-ed in the New York Times yesterday, why the pandemic probably started in a lab in five key points. So here are the five key points, that the virus that caused the pandemic emerged in Wuhan, the city where the world's foremost research lab for SARS-like viruses is located. Right, this is the world's foremost lab for this type of virology study. And if the world's foremost lab for this type of virology study unleashed the pandemic, that reflects very poorly, not just on this lab, but on virologists who by and large circled the wagons to protect the reputation of the Wuhan clinic. The year before the outbreak, the Wuhan Institute, working with U.S. partners, had proposed creating viruses with the defining features of what became known as COVID. Right? The Wuhan lab pursued this work under low biosafety conditions, could not have contained an airborne virus as infectious as COVID. So people don't want to be regulated, generally speaking. People don't want to be intruded upon. People don't want to be investigated. 
and people don't want to jump through all sorts of hoops to do the things that they want to do. A hypothesis that COVID came from an animal at the Hunan seafood market in Wuhan is not supported by strong evidence. Key evidence that would be expected if the virus had emerged from the wildlife trade is still missing. Um, but what, what Bob Gary is saying is that in all of the years, even before the pandemic, the scientists who have been studying the wildlife and the bats all around that area and other parts of China have not been able to find any animals infected with SARS-2-like viruses, uh, except for pangolins far down in South China. They have not found any bats in the area that carry this type of viruses. And so he's saying that all of that evidence must have been covered up. <laughs> Either that or we have been exceedingly unlucky that suddenly a virus with this furin cleavage site just pops up, boom, and leaves no trace across the rest of China in the years leading up to or after the pandemic. So it, it requires a massive conspiracy across tons of scientists, wildlife traders, hospitals, like the government. For years, I was on my high horse. The only legitimate grounds for debate are the grounds of facts and the grounds of logic. But then I, I read a contrary perspective saying that in, in the real world, we have to often make decisions as a, using a heuristic of how credible are the individuals in you know whatever matter that we're arguing about so how credible is this woman uh, alina chan and so let's put her name into x and then let's scroll down see what are the top top posts so peter hotez trashes alina chan's new york times op-ed but i understand if new york times opinion wants to go into competition with rupert murdoch's news corp and become the Wall Street Journal opinion light. It shouldn't do this at the expense of American scientists.